Amen. You may be seated and you can turn to your Bibles in the 22nd chapter of Luke. And you're going to read from verse 24. Uh, the disciples and the Lord Jesus had been celebrating the Passover and Jesus had ins just instituted the Lord's Supper. And either during that time or after that time, a dispute arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them. And those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest. And the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials. And I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the 12 twi tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times, will deny three times that you know me. Nothing, they answered, uh, excuse me. Then Jesus asked them, when I sent you without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. He said to them, but now if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. It is written, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. The disciples said, see, Lord, here are two swords. That's enough, he replied. As I thought about what to speak on today, New Year's resolutions, the beginning of a new year, second chances, new starts, fresh starts, all that fluffy stuff. And I thought about my personal resolutions and, um, you know, I've done the diet thing, I've done the exercise thing. And I even went so far as to look up statistics on who makes resolutions, how many or what percentages, and how many keep them and how many don't. And I said, nah, it's, no, don't go there. But I did think about promises that people make and to themselves and to others. And I went to Peter, and I started thinking about Peter. And so, in light of the fact that this was a very hectic week gone by, and I needed to still come here and do this and share with you, and a busy week, a hectic week coming up in that our house will be in disarray with new flooring, um, new tile being put in in the, in the first level, and that'll be most of the week. And then the following week, getting ready for Kathy's surgery and knee replacement and you know it's like okay Lord here's what I need here's what I want I want to have a message or a series of messages that I can understand completely in my mind and then break it down into three nice little portions okay okay so that's how I ended up with Peter whether or not it goes beyond today or not I don't know 
but we're going to talk about Peter. And in particular, I wanted to share a few things, thoughts that I had. In the message today, I want you to think about and consider God's forgiving love and his cleansing power that leads to transformation that happens within us. And this was a word that the Lord definitely gave me, and I want you to think about this. Even if you will write it down, it's up to you. But it's not what we do, but what we desire. It's not about what we do, but about what we desire. It's important to think about that. And so I want to go to verse 31. A very rich verse, very rich scripture. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. The first thing I want you to understand is that Satan is a tool in the hands of the Lord God Almighty. He is used according to the purposes, the plans, the providence, the sovereignty of our God. Your God and my God. Nothing that he does is not predetermined by the Lord, not allowed by the Lord. There are those who fear him and who run and hide from him and who speak out against him. And Look, he is on a leash. And nothing he does in this world or in the life of a, a man or woman of God's is not permitted by God himself. As we look at, you can look at the, the story of Job and how he went before God and said, and God said to him, have you considered my servant Job? And he was allowed to touch all that Job had, but he was not allowed initially to touch the man himself. And so it is here we see in this little story about Peter, Satan has asked, Satan went to God and said, this guy Peter, he's junk. Let me show you, he's junk. And Jesus says, Jesus took common everyday things and activities and he made them come to life in terms of the life of life with God. He said, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. Now the process of dealing with wheat was that they would harvest the wheat, they would put it in a pile and in the evening hours, the early evening when the the cool winds came in. At the end of the day, they would take a fork and they would toss it up in the air. And the lighter duty stuff, the straw and the chaff would blow away and the, the wheat, the grain, which was heavier, would fall down and into a pile and they would continue to throw that up in the air and it would separate the wheat and the chaff. And then once that process was done, they would take that, what was left over, the, the wheat, and they would put that into a sifter. And so they're picking stuff up off of the threshing floor, and they're putting it into this sifter, and it was designed to allow the wheat kernels to fall through. But the heavier stuff, the junk from off of the floor, of the threshing floor, rocks and gravel and whatever junk there was would stay in the sifter. And so it would be evident in the sifter the junk that had to be removed for the wheat to be available to be used for what it was useful for. And this is the process that Peter was going to go through. And he had to go through this process. Jesus said, as we look down, he says, It is written, 
in verse 37, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. Jesus was well aware of the fact that he had to go to the cross, that this was not a series of events that were happenstance. No, he had an appointment with it, and he understood that. And so Peter also had an appointment with the reconciliation, with the recognition of the junk that would be sifted out of his life. He wasn't junk. He had stuff that had to be evident, that had to be made evident and had to be sifted out so that the faith that remained would be pure, the wheat of his life that was useful. And the beauty of this is, is that Jesus prayed for him. He knew what he was going to go through. He knew the pain that Peter was going to have to deal with when he recognized his pride. Now look, they had just come from the, the Passover meal. And they had gotten into an argument or a dispute about who was the greatest among them. And who do you think? I vote for Peter. Peter's the smartest one. Peter's the most courageous one. Peter's the hardest working. He's the fiercest. He's the one we want leading us. But Peter had to be sifted because there was junk inside of him. That prideful heart had to be exposed because it had nothing to do with being a servant of being an apostle. It had to be sifted out and made evident. And the process would be through the denial. But Jesus prayed for him. I have prayed for you, Simon, that you wouldn't be devastated emotionally by the circumstances that you're going to have to go through. No, that's not what he said. I pray that you'd be able to look good in front of your brothers going forward, that after these things are exposed about you and after you fail, that you'd be able to restore yourself to that position of the greatest. No, that's not what Jesus prayed for. Jesus said, I have prayed that your faith may not fail. That is the most important thing, the sifting the recognition of the junk. Jesus prayed that his faith would not fail. And the scripture tells us, yea, Jesus tells us himself, if you pray anything according to my will, it will be given to you. And what did Jesus say after he said that your faith may not fail? And when you have turned back. Beautiful. A prayer of faith, Jesus knew that it was within God's will to reconcile Peter after having gone through this process of humiliation to be reconciled to Jesus and to be recognized with his brothers and as that pure wheat was sifted out of the junk, that which remained, the pure wheat would be useful for something, the wheat of Peter himself, that which Christ had cultivated within him. Strengthen your brothers. Strengthen your brothers. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, the man who went through, who would go through this process says these words, writes these to the church. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in various trials, so that the proven character of your faith, which is more precious than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, that may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's all about the faith. It's all about trusting and believing God and nothing is more important than our faith to him. 
And he said, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. They would all fall away. They would all be revealed in their specious, superficial commitment to Christ. The reality that fear overwhelmed them. And they gave in to that fear rather than may, remaining commitment, committed. And this is very consistent because in Psalm 51, David said, um, verses 16 and 17, after I have been cleansed, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be white as snow. And when I have returned, when I have been restored, by that cleansing power, that transforming power, I will teach sinners your ways. I will teach transgressors your ways. This is very consistent. And David went through this process in the humiliation of being exposed as a murderer and an adulterer. But Peter made the commitment, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. And this story appears in all four Gospels, and there is slight variations, additions, subtractions. In one of the other Gospels, Peter said, <clears throat> even if I fall away on account of you, I never will. Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. And even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples said the same thing. And we all know that he failed. We all know that he failed. Each of us in our pilgrimage, in our walk with the Lord who began a good work in you and is in the process of completing that and working it out will permit us to be sifted, will permit us to go through difficulties where that which, was, which is in us, which does not completely and wholly rely upon him, might be exposed, not necessarily to everyone, but certainly to ourselves and perhaps to others, as necessary. Peter's situation was quite extreme because of the claims that he made and the impact that he had on the people around him. If he indeed was the one who was chosen to be greatest and the greatest was permitted to fail and walk away, it would have been of no use. But the Lord was going to take this and make this a building block. You know how he said to Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. Simon, Petra, Peter, rock. His willingness to go through this process of transformation and come out on the other side restored, renewed, transformed, changed the history of Christianity. That's the rock that Jesus was talking about. The transforming, uh, what is the words? The cleansing power, the forgiving love, those are the words. The forgiving love and the cleansing power of our Lord Jesus Christ, may it be glorified in each one of us, because we do need to go through this at some place and at some point in time. And as I was saying, Peter's ex case was extreme, and ours certainly may not be near that. And the other point I want to make is 
about being useful, the wheat that was sifted was now useful. And so it is with Peter as he became useful as he went through this sifting process. Because when you go through a sifting process like this, you gain, if your heart is right, you gain a sympathy and understanding of the sinfulness that is real in each person's life. And the fact that you understand that gives you the opportunity to be a minister of grace and mercy to the glory and to the honor of his name. You get to share in that forgiving love and in that cleansing, renewing power that Christ shares, shared with Peter eventually. And I said at the beginning that this, the word, it's not about what we do, but what we desire. If I see what has been sifted out, and I turn to the Lord with that, and I give that to him, and I say, this needs to be changed in me. Please do it. I do not do a promise. I do not make a commitment. And I have been down this road many years in my life with an issue that I recognize is inhibiting my person, my Christian walk, my relationship with my brothers and sisters, and my relationship with my Lord and Savior and my God. And the more willing I am to give that to Him as the desire of my heart to see that worked out in me, and the less likely I am to try to do something about it, the more successful I have found I can be. And I stand here and say to you that the desire of your heart given to the Lord will produce more results than anything that you try to do to overcome. Can you say amen to that? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. He is so good. And the other thing I want to bring to you is in, in Romans chapter 8, verses 34 and 35, Jesus right now is sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and he is not finished with his work. We are his workmanship. We are his recreation now. And it says, Jesus is the right hand at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. He is praying for us the same way that he prayed for Peter on that night when he would be betrayed and denied by his best bud. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who will separate us from that love? Will trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? And I will add, or failure? Or grasping at straws sometimes? Or feeling far away from God? No, you are never far from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You cannot be separated from that. And base, base your life on that at the, at the foundational level. And you will find success. Because your success is because of his faithfulness. I picked that song this morning for that reason. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. His love never fails. Nothing is impossible with God. He who began a good work in you will see it through. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. And it all goes to him for his honor and glory. And when it is revealed, it will be to the praise and glory and honor of his name and his work in the purification of his people, his church, his bride. Pure, spotless, unblemished. 
That should be the desire of our hearts going into 2022, that we would pursue spotlessness and blemish free to be that because we are, he is coming for us. And he is not coming for a corrupt, contaminated, worldly bride. He is coming for a bride that is pure and spotless. So commit in 2022 to letting him work these things out in you that he will expose through the sifting which he allows to happen. Amen? Let's pray as we prepare ourselves for the table. Our Heavenly Father, so great is your mercy and your love for us who can know it fully. Thank you for the way that you are at work in our midst. Have your will and your way with us. Allow us to go through the process and hold us in the palm of your gentle hands when we are shaken, when we need to acknowledge and recognize your admonitions. You are loving, kind, and gracious, good and heavenly Father. Thank you for this time of grace. Bless it and prosper it. Nurture and grow it in our midst and in our souls. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> now, my brothers and sisters, may the peace of God, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, May he equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may the, he work in us what is pleasing to him. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.